So, okay, we're going to kind of shift gears into a little bit more different things and we're not going to be writing that much code, we're still going to write a lot of code of course, but yeah, I want to spend my time actually explaining what I did because the code I'm changing is basically changing a line here, maybe a line there or changing the order, so you know, why do that on the videos and waste all this time. Okay, so yeah, obviously this is a very advanced series, obviously if you are a beginner you probably had already problems, so I'm going to assume that everyone that's watching from now on, and well, pretty much before that, before all of this, understands that we don't really need to be writing all the code, uh, you know, right on the videos, you can find your way around the code if you just see, and if you just get and understand the logic. Okay, with that said, let's start. I already did what I wanted to change in this video. Uh, strangely enough, I don't think I changed the code a lot. I just copied things and created, uh, encapsulated a few methods. So, if you remember, we had one problem when we were hitting load because it was keeping loading a lot, like a huge uh, world. Okay, we had a maximum, yeah, there was a lot of uh, waiting time till all that is done. If we hit load now, it's instant. You might think that it might be because of, uh, you know, the resolution of our world and how big our world is. So let's try something different. We are on our world generation, it's 256 by 256, let's do Let's say, and multiply this by 4, hit play, okay, obviously it takes some time, we haven't yet even do anything with this, we haven't, you know, multi-threaded, we haven't done anything about uh, the simulation area, and, but when I hit load, it's still instant, let's see what we can do, let's multiply this by 4, we have a 4K map now. Obviously, the simulation area is going to take some time to to load. Okay, we can understand this. We still we haven't done anything about the simulation area, and all I'm concerned is about doing the chunks uh, in a more optimized way. This is a huge texture. It's like yeah, it's a 4K texture. 4K by 4K. That's a lot of data. And when I hit load, not only it loads, you will see why it's I basically zoomed out just so that we can see, and I'm only creating uh, one by one. If we go over here, okay, I have the center one, and I'm only creating one per edge, but you will see that, yeah, it's really fast. We loaded a 4K data map so fast that, yeah, it was less than half a second. So you might think that might be some multi-threading involved or anything like that, but the reality is that, yeah, I've actually moved everything onto the main thread. And I'm going to tell you why, however, this works. Of course, with multi-threading, we can make it even faster, but as you can see, we don't necessarily need it to be much faster. Obviously, when all of this have been instantiated again, have been created, if I scan the entire map, we're going to have a few problems. That's obviously, okay, because we have a lot of data into our world. But uh, we can fix that. The trick is over there to actually load them from the drive and not keeping them in memory. and removing them and adding them when we need them. Okay, we still have what I want to actually pass to you is that uh, to understand that we are using like a ton of amount of data. Okay, 4K map by 4K map. Yeah, I'm not that good with map, uh, with uh, math, but we have like 16, 16 million uh, data, data nodes. Okay. And that's only on uh, the X and Z. Multiply that by 10, again, 
we have yeah the technical term is a set on <laughs> of nodes to to keep data on it okay so how do we do this okay I'm going to make this on a 256 by 256 because yeah there's no need we seen that even if we, if we set this into 10k resolution we're still going to have the same performance okay because it's only creating data that we need uh, some things broke however before we see the code some things broke and that's mostly when moving around although you can see that it still stays the same we have to move you know the units and stuff like that they have to be aware about the the, the chunk position onto the world okay but anyway so let's go right onto the code the only thing that changed and the only script that changed is actually the world script everything just stays the same but here's what I'm doing over here on start okay all of this were before and what we were doing before we were simply calling the create world let's close this which of course was creating this this took a significant amount of time uh, because it's two four loops based on your world length uh, yeah that, that's a lot of uh, iterations on those two nested loops okay so basically it means that you had based on your chunk length you had that much iterations so uh, then we were requesting the world generation and from the world generation we basically start creating jobs for our threads but we don't need any of that really because we don't need to care what's on the other side of uh, our world when we are on this side of the world okay that's obvious so instead of doing that and just for testing to be honest uh, because yeah I want to see if we actually do need to have this as a uh, if we do need to have it multi-threaded or not and from what you can see we probably not we can still add multi-threading because uh, right now the only jobs and the only processing that actually happens it's the yeah it's basically the chunks uh, visualization so that's not really a lot but when we add all the other things that we need well then we're going to have a few issues uh, we're going to have to adapt not if you have a few issues of course you can understand that so here's what I'm doing first of all I just want to find the position of my camera and I want to create that wall first okay I can if I wanted this to be at 000 then you can just uh, set it at 000 even though my camera is at 000 at this current time okay so this is the new we get the camera holder and we translate that into chunk positions and then we call a new method which we're going to see which is basically just uh, an encapsulation of a few methods we uh, we are using to create our world okay uh, just don't forget to set up the actual array for chunks otherwise you're going to be getting uh, you know another reference on the chunks because you will then have in initial initialize your uh, three-dimensional array so the method that is is very similar to the actual request generation but well from here up till down here it's exactly the same code okay I didn't it's basically a copy paste then instead of adding this onto a job down here instead of adding it in our list of jobs all I did is basically manually call the start creating world because now this runs on the main thread I know that when the notify complete actually executes it will have to go through the entire process of creating the chunk adding all the data where it needs to and that's what we actually need and when the job is done turns that into true okay and we then notify this as a complete which basically just goes and calls this the callback 
if we want to keep everything inside the the main thread then uh, we can just you know get rid of this change a little bit the logic we can join all of them together but because we have done already that much of work you know why waste this so we'll just work with this just keep in mind if we only wanted the main thread then we can just join this okay so we create our world which basically instead of start creating world this a better name will have been uh, creating chunk so let's name that okay notify complete which means it goes a lot the data into the chunk and then we have a target chunk this is a little bit of an issue because uh, well not an issue uh, but we could it's a little bit redundant if we had on the notify complete and on the callback to actually output it back into yeah into a variable so what this does is basically creates a chunk and goes and adds this into our three-dimensional array but we don't have uh, the reference into for which for the chunk we only have its address how do we have its address because we tell it to go and create it there so we use a, our method we had previously which was to get a circular chunk to get a chunk with a circular address which means if the x is minus zero it's going to get the last one and if well if the x or the z or if they are uh, higher than the length then it resets back to zero okay and then we simply visualize the chunk based on the target position we have over here okay and we have a callback to return the actual chunk because we're going to use it to visualize the chunks around us so the very first one we want we just tell him to place the chunk on yeah i think this is actually wrong because it places it on vector 3.0 uh, so yeah this has to change and go on to the camera holder well you know the chunk that comes from the camera holder which means that can change and be cx cy and cy this is uh, yeah cz okay something like that or oh, even though in this exact case it's still going to be zero 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 because I know my camera holder is at the origin okay that's pretty much it so this will create the chunks and I say I turn the flag on that we have created our world because we have a an if statement inside our update and this doesn't well for now we don't really need it at this current moment we might use it this later if we start multi-threading again the well if not the center one maybe the other ones okay so basically what we need is over here and then we have a monitor camera chunk okay this stays the same the only thing that changes is the visualized chunks around sender so the visualized chunks around sender same thing everything is still the same the stuff that changes is down here so when you are getting a circular chunk when you're trying to get the, the chunk okay again it's a circular address and all that if that target chunk is null which means you haven't yet created it so the reference you have onto your yeah onto your three-dimensional array is null okay we haven't yet created a new instance of chunk which means it doesn't have data it doesn't have anything in it okay then find its position because you don't have the chunk it means you don't have the address of the chunk but you have the address over here uh, this is an encapsulated method that basically does what we said actually let's go and see it go to definition okay i basically cut this from inside the get chunk circular method we had and paste it over here okay so um, yeah I did this so I can reuse this I don't want to be copy pasting all of this every time I want to so I just encapsulated that 
Okay, so circle around position. Okay, we have our position. Then we call create target chunk on the main thread. So it does go and create it again, and then we visual we add it the target chunk. We add it back on the chunks we are actually visualizing now. Okay, then visualize chunk. If it is uh, if the target chunk is already exists inside our wall, we have previously created it. And then we just do what we were doing before. We visualize the chunk on the transform position we want it and change it and bring it back again. So basically, yeah, that's it. That's all I had to do, which is really just copying lines of code we you, we created before and adding it or adding them on a new place, which is really cool if you think about it. Because we have all our methods we need to do, we just need to find the proper order for them. So, with that way, we can still move around. Again, this is all on the main thread. It's not really a multi-threaded right now, but you can see that at least for now we don't have the need. We don't, yeah, we don't really need to to multi-thread at least for now, of course. Okay. So basically why this guy is vanishing is because we're now if you look on the camera position okay we were basically going the other way we are on the other side of the map right now and we're going back we are at the origin or close to origin okay so yeah with this we can work now because this is stellar performance at least uh, when we are visualizing uh, one but let's say we want to visualize three by three sides or we can try even more okay performance oops let's unload that it's not you see that performance it's not still not that bad let's see with the stats okay you can see that it's not really that much even with the profiler on obviously we're not running any simulations we're not doing anything there is uh, let's see let's see what are the spikes player update time this is pro wait for target fps so that's not what we care collect global stats global stats uh, that's from the yeah so the editor overhead takes like 21 percent okay and the player update time which basically the wait for target fps is the other four percent and we had this spike it wasn't even into our position and you can see that sometimes um, so anyway, yeah, yeah, let's not drag this anymore. You get what I mean. It's not always necessary that you be needing multi-threading. At least for now, we don't. But because these are tutorials, obviously, uh, we might bring it back and just for the fun of it, let's make the other, yeah, the around the center or maybe the next ones. Let's say we want to multi-thread them. So. Anyway, let's finish with this. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and if you like to see more stuff like this, then consider supporting me a Patreon so we can keep making all of these nice things. I'll see you next time.